MSI, why do you have to be so confusing? Because we just covered the Z890 Tomahawk, which costs a whopping $300, but then they also have the MSI Pro Z890A Wi-Fi, which will cost you just $10 less. And the best thing of all is, when you look closer at those two motherboards, the price isn't everything that's similar. In fact, they are pretty much identical. Starting off with CPU power, here we have 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 power phases rated at a maximum of 90 amps, which is more than enough when combined with two full pins for CPU power to handle even a heavily overclocked next-gen Intel CPU. And speaking of overclocking, this motherboard even supports memory at up to 9200 mega transfers per second, thanks to its CUDIM support. Then moving down to PC expansion, we do have the primary PC Gen 5 slot as is to be expected, and then to additional Gen 4 for x slots as well, though they're physically 16x. And again, like I'm saying with most of the boards this generation, I wish there was a 1x slot as well to better match 1x cards, but we can't all be winners. Now, one thing that's actually missing here when it comes to PCIe expansion in general when compared to Tomahawk is the lack of a 8-pin power connector to give more power to your adding cards. And when it comes to storage, here we have four M.2 slots in total, which is about what you'd expect at this price, with one of them being Gen 5 and the rest Gen 4, plus four set of connectors. So that's all pretty much identical, and what's also identical is the fact you also get eight various fan connectors, plus three addressable RGB connectors, and one non-addressable one. So okay, maybe there's some big differences and the rear I.O. to make this a separate motherboard from Tomahawk. And well, no, not really. When it comes to the amount of USB Type-A, we still do see seven ports here, which is probably one less than I'd expect on a motherboard at this price, but oh wow, the star of the show here is still the three Type-C connectors, two of them are Thunderbolt 4, which means they run at 40 gigabit per second. Plus you also have HDMI for integrated graphics, but no display port. And then the other big thing that MSI are pushing this generation, 5 gigabit ethernet, which is nice to see, even if it's not too useful to most. Plus add to that Wi-Fi 7, and unfortunately, as we come to expect from most motherboard manufacturers now, just two audio jacks and optical SPDIF as your audio options, running off the ALC 1220p codec. So yeah, you got the right, even the rear I.O. is pretty much the same. Pretty much the only big difference between these motherboards is the overall aesthetic. While both motherboards lack any kind of RGB, this one is even more minimalist and of course has white slash silvery shrouds on it. Meaning that just the colour scheme may drive you off this motherboard if it won't match the rest of your build, but if that's not an issue to you, then that's just a great way to save $10. Though that is if you're still after what MSI are offering here. And there's still plenty of other great, cheaper Z90 motherboards. And I kind of just realised, I kind of wasted everyone's time. I could have just pointed you to the Tomahawk video, seeing how these things are identical anyway. But still, don't get me wrong, it's not bad by any means. So if you want to check it out yourself, then our Amazon and Newegg links to it will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below, where you're also going to find our Patreon, because even a single dollar month truly goes a long way. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Vroniak, Bon Schmoker, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Max Sumner, Shane Allcroft, and Level Up. But anyway, that's what it's I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.